Hi everyone and welcome back to to episode 12 of In Conversation With. My name is Sinead and I'm delighted to be back this week to host uh, this week's episode um, of In Conversation With. So for anyone who's never been before, you're very welcome. We host these webinars every week uh, on Wednesdays from four until five o'clock and we will cover two courses or two areas of DCU uh, in each session. And it is your chance to come on and basically direct where the conversation goes. So I'll focus your attention to the Q&A function that we have at the bottom of the screen. Um, you can ask me and ask our hosts or our panelists any questions that you have about our various courses in DCU and we will try our very best to answer your questions. So the first session today at four o'clock will be with Keisha, who um, is just a recent graduate of mental health nursing in DCU. And then at half past four, Sean Coffey will be on to talk about the Bachelor of Business Studies. So we're going to start with uh, Keisha Keisha, and I'll try and promote her into the room now, see if I can do my best to promote you to a panelist. I think that worked okay. Keisha, are you there? Hello. I can hear you. I can't see you yet though, the big reveal. There. <laughs> there you are. Hello. It's lovely to see you. Lovely, lovely to see you too. <laughs> Thank you so much for giving up your time, uh, your precious time off from work to uh, join us on this call today. It's very valuable for students to kind of get to hear firsthand from students who have studied in DCU and who have graduated as well. So how are you keeping? How's everything with you? Well, it's grand so far. Um, I am only after finishing my three months probationary as a, um, this kind of like the trial as a nurse. And so now I'm officially officially being paid as a proper congratulations goodness after all your years of study you finally got there <laughs> well I, done i know and you know what like it really did fly by and you know part of me does miss college <laughs> yeah oh absolutely it's funny being out in the workforce isn't it because it's great to work and earn money but then you do miss that element of college life and you know going to lectures although it is quite different this year with the online learning so there's it's a whole new experience um so for the people who are watching here today do you want to tell us a little bit about in general what mental health nursing is about and then we might go into the specifics of the course okay so um i suppose um first off like when i went into the course i didn't have really like a lot of information about it as well and i think like a lot of people do kind of go into it not really knowing what to expect um so mental health nursing predominantly it's really all about um a specialization that specializes with caring for people's mental health so it may come you know like it's become a very big topic especially now with the pandemic um depression anxiety um a lot of illnesses that we do see in practice would be you know psychosis or also known as schizophrenia which is you know you, you see a lot in the movies it's always yeah. uh, portrayed very differently and nearly kind of very volatile but when you actually go there um as a student you know like I do remember going into it as a first year and I was terribly afraid didn't really know what to expect culturally mental health wasn't really like a big thing for us you know so um going in it was so much more different and it was so interesting um mm -hmm. and I think like it, it really covers like a lot of things like you're really helping people through a lot of stressors in their life so um it may be financial stressors people may have just lost their jobs and things kind of end up piling on on top of each other and um, people may have lost a loved one so it can always be very difficult and grief is always such a very different um journey for a lot of people and mm -hmm. um, i've encountered um adolescents that have undergone extreme trauma in their life and um, a lot of bullying and you know I think in one sense it's very eye-opening because when we're not in their place and it's all just hearsay it's quite oh yeah like this happening but we don't really kind of understand yeah. how bad it is until you've really met someone who may have undergone such a traumatic experience for sure and um so like throughout the course as your year goes up as well like they we we're taught how to kind of deal with 
their stress and how to reassure them and to kind of provide them with the help that they need and just being able to provide a safe space predominantly because you know a lot of these people may have quite difficult home environments and are really unable to verbalize how they're really feeling and you know a lot of this is just really you know at Unfortunately, some of them kind of grow up in really poor coping um, families. Mm -hmm. So their coping abilities are just not as, I suppose, healthy as other people, you know? Yeah. So, um, like those kind of stuff. Um, we are taught, you know, like the basic nursing skills. Um, predominantly first year and second year, we are with um, the other uh, nursing groups mm -hmm. so usually that's when we are taught like the same kind of modules and um, you know like understanding the body would be the name of our module so predominantly like anatomy we'd have pharmacology so learning about your medications which is quite important as well for us and um, giving a lot of very I suppose strong maybe antipsychotic medications and all that stuff and knowing the doses can be very important and um and first year, especially like I have encountered first years now as a preceptor, which is very weird for me. Yeah. <laughs> um, but like teaching them how to do like blood pressure, doing the manual version of the blood pressures and all that stuff. So we do really like encounter such different sets of skills. And you do really meet a lot of people as well with different skills and different knowledge that you constantly just learn from. So yeah, I think um, it's definitely, as you mentioned, an area that is becoming more and more important for people to become professionals in. I mean, even over the last four or five years, there's been so much progression in how mental health is perceived, whether that's in the media and politics and in schools. So I, I'd imagine there is a huge interest in this course going forward, because as you said, there's going to be so many, not only are people suffering with these kind of um, illnesses, but even the pandemic is causing a lot of stress for people and and you know people aren't feeling their best and we need people like you who have studied this to you know help us all so you mentioned there when you were you're working at the hospital and you are teaching um the current first years or whoever's out in their place that maybe to learn about blood pressure and how to you know give injections properly and all that is there a lot of practical elements on the course then you must do a lot of placement um once you're in dcu there is yes so Placement really, like I think a lot of people when they go into the course, they expect to just be in placement basically for the whole four years. But that's not exactly it. Because um on your first year and your second year, um, you do spend a lot more time doing the theory stuff. So that is really when you're spending a lot of time with the other um nursing courses, you're spending a lot of time in labs and um, in lectures. So just a lot of like reading and just kind of building up in your abilities and really like your knowledge and understanding of why something is done or maybe yeah. why this is happening for someone. Mm -hmm. um, and when you go into placement, then it kind of just makes sense. It just kind of clicks like a puzzle. You're kind of like, oh, okay, that's, that's the reason why. Yeah, exactly. Everything you've learned in, in the lecture, you're finally seeing it in real life and it all makes sense. Yeah. Um, but um, placement wise, really, um, you know, when as a first year, you're really put in an observational role, you know, at the end of the day, we know, like, it's very weird now for me to say that as an as a nurse, like, we know <laughs> um, that, that you're not really like experienced, you don't really have a lot in your toolbox yet, you know, so it's really more for you to kind of see what is going on and just to kind of orient yourself and just to kind of know what to expect and just really build on the knowledge that you'll need for placement. Because I think, um, you know, different places, you learn such different things or they specialize in different things. So each placement really kind of gives you an opportunity to um, get to know certain, um, certain bits that you might not have gotten to really um, cover in a different place or in college. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, first year is really pretty basic and it's just really to kind of, for you to know really what to expect. And second year would be a bit more hands-on. And um, once everyone hits into second year, that's also the time that we can work as a healthcare assistant. So 
I suppose like everyone would be hearing now that a lot of students unfortunately can't do part time as healthcare workers. But um, you know, like I remember as a second year, I did work in a nursing home part time, and you know, it also gave me a chance to really kind of build my confidence a little bit more, still be paid in the process. Yeah. Um, and also learn a lot more kind of general skills because I think with um with mental health we're not equipped as much with um a big amount of general skills um I mean general nursing skills so um yeah like those stuff like we do really get to learn more in the job rather yeah. than um in college um and third year and fourth years obviously like as everyone knows in college that's when kind of things kind of get a little bit more real a bit more intense yeah. um definitely a lot more um placement hours definitely a lot more exposure mm -hmm. um for us in mental health like second year and third year is when the specialized kind of placements start to come so i did find myself um in placements such as like addiction and homelessness services so i worked with merchants key for a few weeks i was in a and e in the matter um specializing um uh, no i'm covering someone who specializes in um self-harm in emergency so like that was so interesting um <laughs> And really getting to work with the consultants and different other um, multidisciplinary kind of professionals, you know, and that, that was just so, um, I suppose it's just such a, a pot of knowledge because you're just learning ev for, from everyone. You can have like five minutes just chatting with someone and hearing maybe an example of what they do and you know, it just gives you really like a perspective of how like the whole team works. And it's not just like such an individual job. It's yeah. really like a team job. Um, but yeah, um, we do um, a general placement as well. So um, we do it for usually it's a month of general placement. So I did mine in the Matter Hospital. Um, and that was in third year. Usually this, that, that's when we do it. And then fourth year is when internship happens um yeah yeah <laughs> no I love that and I think a lot of students as well when they're looking at the various nursing degrees say in DCU in particular they might worry that oh goodness maybe I do want to just do general nursing because I'm not sure but even as you said you're specializing obviously you chose to do mental health nursing but there's so many different areas that you can work in within that sector you know you're not just confined to one space there's loads of different organizations that you can work in and various different um, places that you can even go on placement like you mentioned a couple of different ones there or your part-time work it's really you can kind of decide what route you want to go through and um, with it for the, the, the students who are listening in today and are maybe unsure if it would suit them do you think there's particular skills or personality traits that you have that might make you good in the role say would you have to um you know be quite mentally strong to be a nurse i feel like that's maybe an obvious question but you you, you must see a lot in, in your day-to-day -day, um work in the hospital do you think there's certain traits that might make someone be a good nurse whether it's being caring you know being attentive like to deal with people um i think you know like there are skills and certain aspects in your person in, in one's personality that really kind of grows as your year goes on and you're exposed to more you know placement and more stories from people and hearing a lot about their experiences um i think you know it's really kind of i mean yeah caring and empathetic and being able to really listen to people's experience and you know really kind of understand that it's their experience and it can be quite different for everyone and everyone's coping ability is different mm. can be very important and and that's not just in mental health that's just predominantly for nursing in general like um some people just sometimes need to let it all out and yeah. be able to vent it out because unfortunately you know like society can be very very um harsh mm -hmm. and some people don't really have that outlet unfortunately and sometimes it can be the fa families that can be quite difficult to deal with um really like i think aspects in our personality really just develop 
as we progress. I, I can't really say um, that certain aspects of per- personality means that, oh, you'd be the best nurse now. Like, of course. Because like at the end of the day, you know, like we do have like such a variety of patients. Like you'll have patients who will try to chance everything. <laughs> you'll, have, you'll have patients who can be so dependent and you just find yourself being really firm and all that. And it can, can be very difficult especially as a first year as a second year to really be able to voice out and be say wait a minute like you have to stop yeah yeah you know, like back up or calm down like you know like that's very different you know like and people think that that's so confrontational but really it's just you know like you have to give yourself maybe time you get, need to give yourself the space to really post mm-hmm. stuff as well you need to be able to really put people like tell people to say that like to just acknowledge the boundaries that you've put and you know like those are just really difficult stuff and you know like before college I don't think I would have been able to really kind of do that and really establish myself and be telling someone who's older than me you know yeah. especially like you have to like back down or like you can't say that to someone you know mm-hmm. and usually um, I think there's such a culture that we we keep quiet and we just kind of go about our day and it's not our business and all that but in nursing when something like that happens you 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 kind of go against the grain sure yeah no you absolutely and often I'm sure you'd be looking after multiple patients at once it's sure it's rare that you just have the one person you're looking after so you might have to tell people I'll get back to you later sorry I have to go to this person first but I think that's very inspiring that you were saying you mightn't have had those skills say in sixth year or like when before you came to DCU but it's something you were taught and you'll learn as you go on so for people who are listening today that are thinking I'd love to do mental health nursing or nursing of some description but I don't know if I'd be great at that you know Keisha has just said there she didn't feel that way necessarily either but it's something that's incorporated within the course and the more experience that you're like spending outside of the classroom and in in these um like organizations or hospitals that's how you, how you gain that experience as well and um, so that's fantastic so Keisha where are you working now can I ask you a little bit about what kind of path you decided to take after the degree yeah so um I'm currently working under the HSE now so okay. um I am currently working in the rehabilitation services in Dublin South. So uh, my job at the moment is really dealing with people in the community and kind of ensuring that they have the support in the community um, and prevent them from having to be admitted to Mm -hmm. an inpatient unit and refocus on recovery and, you know, helping them build on to their skills to hopefully um in a few months or in you know in a few years maybe that they're able to maybe live independently or be able to kind of cope with difficult situations um more like healthier and in a better manner that won't really endanger themselves or other people um or just really be a point of contact even for some people especially now in this pandemic so i think that's where I'm at at the moment. Um, I am currently working in a, like a high support hostel. So these are people who have, they're not exactly ready to be living independently and are requiring sure. support 24 hours a day still, but we're not as maybe as intense as inpatient units. Um, it's more so really kind of, giving like giving them the space to deal with things themselves and when they're unable to I suppose cope properly or in a better manner then we step in or we kind of just provide some guidance we do some we do a lot of activities with them so um we do maybe like relaxation we do a lot of exercises especially now when everyone can't go out and Mm with a lot of um, releasing a lot with recovery based programs. So this may be people who, you know, have had difficulty in their life and they may have been service users themselves and um, they are ready to kind of be able to talk to people who's kind of going through similar stuff at the moment and be kind of be able to guide them and, you know, suppose reassure them that they're not alone in the way they're feeling because I think can be very lonely 
especially when you get a diagnosis or when you've been feeling that way and you feel like it's you against the world exactly yeah and, and I think quite often people in those scenarios as well um as you mentioned you could be one of the only people that they talk to that day or talk to about what they're going through and um, so there, there's certainly a, a personal element to it as well that not only are you there to care for them medically but also emotionally a lot of the time as well um, I'll just remind everyone that there is a Q&A function. So if you do have any questions for Keisha, um, do throw them in. Um, they're anonymous, so don't be worrying. There's no such thing as a silly question. Um, whether you want to ask something else about placement or about particular skills, just let us know in the Q&A. Uh, we might step away from nursing for just a minute because you did so much with your time in DCU outside <laughs> of the class. And so many students who are studying science-related subjects are often way too busy to get involved and you still managed to fit it in. So not only were you a student ambassador, but I know you're very prominent in the Glee Club as well. So do you want to cover for a couple of minutes maybe some of the other things you got up to um, to show that there's more to life in college than just your course? Oh yeah, and like oh, I do remember like speaking about it in like higher options and in open day about people thinking that like if you go into nursing that you don't have a life anymore and like that isn't necessarily true I mean I did manage thankfully to kind of just join everything and I remember being a first year and just joining nearly like 12 clubs and don't really know half of what I've been joining mostly for the um for the free pizza the freebie <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> so, um yeah like um I mean I'm a person now who's like I'm very fond of music and I'm, I'm very fond of singing and performing and that has been a big part of my life so um mm -hmm. the Glee club for me was definitely such an outlet um and was such a nice way to kind of get to know people outside of my course and um, I think when you're doing nursing it's so hard to kind of get out of it because once people are starting to do their part times and all that, all that you're talking about is like, oh, this happened at work. Like you won't leave. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> or you just kind of like sometimes, oh, it's just so weird. Like it's just like nearly rant central because like you're talking about <laughs> so much like nursing stuff and you just can't get away. Yeah. And, you know, like Glee was definitely like an outlet where you know, like I met people from different um, courses, from business to multimedia and all that stuff. And, you know, like they may not exactly be personalities I would have thought I'd get along with. But I think like finding people who had common interests with me and had similar passions as me in terms of like singing and really performing and, you know, have been really very open in terms of, you know like just being friends and all that stuff like it was so so nice and it was so great and you know we we definitely like had our um fair share of great um exposures like for example we did perform in Houston station before for wow. um, one of those um crisps brands I don't even remember anymore but that was like during Christmas um, and that was me the first year and I was thinking how gassed that was it that was and just like singing so weirdly in Houston station in the dark um, we performed um, in the helix um, every March like unfortunately the last show didn't go through because of the pandemic but um, that was definitely like something that was um, so big for Glee um, but I did like when I was in first year as well, I did join volleyball um, very briefly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I did really enjoy it as well as badminton and all that stuff. And I think like you really are spoiled for choice in DCU. Like there's nothing bad to say. And if it's not available, you can just start it yourself, which is great. I mean, exactly, exactly. Yeah. It only takes 20 signatures to set up your own society. So if uh, there was something that um, you came to DCU and it didn't exist, uh, you can set it up yourself. Keisha, we have a question that came in there. Someone asked, um, what are some other paths to branch off in after the course? So could you work in various different environments or could you even do a postgrad actually or a master's degree after this course? Yeah, so um, I think, if anything, nursing does open a lot more opportunities, I think, afterwards. Um, and it, 
it's not just about the travel maybe after and I know like a lot of people are looking into maybe moving into Australia or New Zealand or Dubai Abu Dhabi you know like name it and you can work there yeah and, but like myself like I am planning to pursue general um, nursing afterwards and just be kind of double specialized mm-hmm. and now that has really been my plan at the very beginning because like I didn't think I was um I actually didn't know that I was uh, applying for mental health nursing until I got it from the CAO so I was oh, like, no way <laughs> <laughs> you kept yeah. that quiet for a while Keisha. <laughs> yeah, yeah I didn't know I was applying for the course and for the college at the same time until I got it from the post <laughs> Well, there you go, people who are listening to the CAO. Double check those codes because you yeah, could end up in a random course. <laughs> no, it worked out for me. Like, I mean, I, my first choice was general nursing, but at the end of the day, like, it just gave mental health nurse my chance. And, you know, it worked out. And I am loving every single minute of it. And um, there is really room for postgraduate. And even now, like I've been offered to do like s- multiple courses. Like if you go through like the different universities now and just have a look through, there's so many postgraduate or even like diploma courses that's offered for people who've mm-hmm. been here undergrad as nurses. Um, there really is like, I think like with nursing, you know, um, Let's see if you decide maybe to do like psychology, it can be used as a pre med course. Um, and it's such, um, and I think like it's such a great uh, pre med uh, course to actually use because mm-hmm. you have like certain skills already that will be expected of you as a doctor and will be kind of taught to you in practice. And you kind of be like, oh, yeah, I've done it already, you know? Exactly. <laughs> so- You've covered some of it already. But yeah, I think it's fair to say then that there are various different routes that you can go down depending on what you want to do and again you'll be exposed to a lot over those four years of studying that I'd say you might even enter the university thinking you want to do one thing in the future but actually trying everything out you might you might decide you want to do something completely different and as you said that's the beauty of nursing you can really go into a lot of different areas after it and there's so much um transferable skills you know like at the end of the day you know like a lot of people do change careers afterwards and you know like nursing can be quite intense you know don't get me wrong like it has it really has its moments where like you do find yourself in such tough situations and you know like you're just drained mentally and physically at times going home but it is definitely one of the most gratifying things when you've seen maybe a really like a tough tough case recover or just being able to kind of help family through their grief and all that stuff and seeing the recovery. Um, I've had, um, you know, I've had a patient who was so anxious that they were so unwilling to go out of their house. And then the next thing, you know, like there was like a switch in their brain where they nearly lived by the fact that like, if it causes causes them anxiety, that they have more reason to actually do it. And they were just doing everything that I may may be wouldn't uh, be ready to do myself, you know. And yeah. it's just really amazing to see, like, and it's such a testament to see as well that when people are ready to kind of recover, and it's really the time for them that it just happens, you know. It just works out. And, yeah, yeah. And being to be able to be part of that journey is just so nice, and it's such eye-opening experience and the growth for you as well like you just constantly learn it's never like it's a never-ending cycle of just learning Mm -hmm. through the other people's experiences which is mad you know yeah Um, it sounds like one of the most rewarding jobs you could ever do (laughs) really it's and difficult and, and really rewarding. Um, guys, if anyone has a last minute question, do let us know because it's just turned half past now. Keisha, that was the quickest half an hour of my life. Oh my God, I could keep talking to you about this for ages. Um, I'm not sure if there's any more questions, but um, if Keisha does move on, however, um, and, and you want to get in touch with us, just we have an email address, studenthealth at dcu.ie um, and we can answer any questions you have about mental health nursing. Don't see any more coming through. Um, so Keisha, you are free to go and enjoy your evening unless you've anything else to add at the end no 
thanks, Emil. And, you know, at the end of the day, this year has been a lot, uh, really tough for a lot of people. And especially now, it has changed the way placements are going for nursing students. And a lot of people are kind of left in limbo, especially mm-hmm. when you have to book for, you know, like to rent accommodation and all that stuff. And um, like my real advice is just to constantly seek for help. You know, at the end of the day, like your you your college journey is not just such an individual journey. Like you're really gonna meet people in a process and there's so many supports, especially with DCU. Like like if there's anything, like I really did feel so supported um during my time and I've had so many people and you know, friends that I met through the university that has that I knew had my back yeah especially like with this pandemic and you know going through it as an intern as well so so yeah I mean hope everyone kind of manages through the pandemic and hope you guys have a good time Thank you for those lovely words, Keisha. And I think for anyone listening today, that was so informative and I think really gives a a great idea of what the course entails. And that's exactly what this series is for. So I will let you go. I'm going to change your role back to an attendee, but thank you so much for joining us today. I really appreciate that.